Chelsea fall victim to past criticisms as Isaac Hayden nets late on to give the Magpies a 1-0 victory at St James's Park. Watch until the end of this review to hear all of my thoughts on yesterday's match. Hello people, welcome to my channel, welcome to another video, this is my review of the game which took place yesterday evening at St James's Park in the Premier League between Newcastle United and Chelsea, which Newcastle United ended up winning by one goal to nil. So what I'm going to do for you guys in terms of this review is that firstly, I'll be giving you guys the lineup that Frank Lampard fielded at the start of yesterday's match, I'll then be giving you guys my thoughts on the match itself. And as always, I'll be including the positives and the negatives in which I took from the match. And lastly, I'll be giving you guys my thoughts on Chelsea's upcoming Premier League fixture, which will be taking place next Tuesday at Stamford Bridge against Arsenal with kickoff at 8.15pm UK time. So without further ado, let's get straight into this review. Now for my thoughts on the match itself, and as always, starting off with the first half. I actually felt as though both sides made a good start to the match. Newcastle United um, showed their intent straight away, which was um, to hit us on the counter-attack, and we um, looked as though we wanted to, attack, wanted to attack them from the get-go, which is what we did. We did have a few half chances in the early exchanges of the match, but we didn't make um, clear enough chances um, from... Now for my thoughts on the match itself, and as always, starting off with the first half. I felt as though both sides made a good start to the match. Newcastle United really did show their intent um, throughout the course of the game, and they really did show what they wanted to do throughout the course of the game, um, which was to try and sit back and hit us on the counter-attack, which is what they did for large parts of the first half, to be honest. Um, although in the early exchanges of the match, they did attack us, they did cause us a few problems, however... We did the same to them, we attacked them and we did cause them a few problems, although um, we had varying degrees of success in terms of um, creating chances or actual clear-cut chances. As the first half went on, I felt as though we grew more into the game, we started to create more chances. Um, some of them we really should have put away. The most notable chance in which we had in the first half um, came through N'Golo Kante. I can't remember who passed the ball to him, but he was in the half spaces. I mean, he was in one of the um, half spaces. He was he was in the channel in between um, one of the wing backs and one of their one of the um, outside centre backs. Um, he received the ball in the box. He decided to shoot, and that was a bad decision from him, which is not something you'd often hear me say um, say about N'Golo Kante because normally his decision making is good, but um, in in that um, particular moment, it wasn't good. But yes, um, he chose to shoot when he could have squared it to Tammy Abraham, and that could have arguably, that hit, had he passed that ball, that could have argue, arguably been 1 0 to us, because um, Tammy Abraham would have most likely put the ball into the back of the net, but of course that wouldn't have been guaranteed. But yes, that was our clearest chance in the first half. Newcastle United also had a, a guilt edge chance, or a relatively guilt edge chance in the first half, um, which came through Joey Linton. I cannot remember who crossed the ball to him, but it was a beautiful cross. Good header as well. Maybe he mistimed it slightly, but um, brilliant cross. He got his head on it. it. The ball ends up hitting the crossbar. I mean, let me let me let me rephrase that. Let, let me say that again. The ball ended up hitting the crossbar. Ended up hitting the crossbar. May I say it again? And for me, Kepa was beaten. Had that ball been under the bar, I do not think Kepa would have had any chance of saving it. But yes, um, overall, I'd say it was a good first half from us because. It, in, in, a, um, in an attacking sense, we really did um, try to put them under a lot of pressure. We were taking a few long shots. We were um, trying to get through them with um, quick passing. And of course, against the low block, that is not easy. So um, we have to give ourselves credit for doing so. But yes, um, you have to give Newcastle United credit for the way they played in a, def in a, um, in a defensive sense. But now for my thoughts on the second half. I actually thought that we started the second half very well. 
where he could have had a goal within the first few minutes of the second half. And you, and you can argue that we really should have had a goal in the, in the first few minutes of the second half. We created, an amp, we created ample chances in the second half and some of them we really should have put away. And we, we, it's funny because we ended up, um, we ended up um, leaving St. James's Park with four shots on target and we didn't put the ball in the back of the net and we actually had 19 shots in the game, which is um, five more than their, than five more? It's 10 more than the amount of shots and shots on target they had combined. So they had nine, they had seven shots on goal and two on target. So combine them, you, yeah, you get the idea. But yes, um, it's a funny one because we really should have put the ball in the back of the net and it's very frustrating that we didn't do so. As the game went on in the second half, we looked as though we were getting more and more frustrated. Um, William did look as though he had a growing problem and I did hear um, one of the commentators say that he had a growing problem. And, um, yeah, hopefully he's okay because we are going to need him because our only two wingers at the moment would be um, would be William, no, not William, would be Pedro and Callum Hudson-Odoi. That is if William is not available for the game against Arsenal, which I'll be talking about later on in this video. But yes, um, you can argue that he should have come off the pitch, but he did try. He was trying really hard. I, I really saw that from him, so I'm not really going to blame him too much or put too much blame on him for yesterday's loss against Newcastle United but yes I've gone off on a tangent apologies for that but yes um, back to my thoughts on our second half performance against Newcastle United yesterday um, we were taking more long shots um, we did we did um, we did see Frank Lampard make a couple of attacking changes um, Rhys James did go off injured so hopefully he's okay as well because I do feel as though we're going to need him against Arsenal um, a really physical side but yes um I felt as though N'Golo Kante was re doing really well. I felt Rhys James was doing really well. They both, I think they were our standout players yesterday evening against Newcastle United. Um, and it's just a shame that Rhys James had to go off because after that, I felt as though we lost a lot of our attacking impetus down our right-hand side and we focused a lot of our play down on the left-hand side um, when Emerson came on for Rhys James. And Emerson did all right when he came on. He could have scored when he hit that when he hit that. Sh when he hit the ball from outside the box, and if that went in, I probably would have gone absolutely mental. That's a given. But yes, um, it just wasn't to be for us in terms of the chance, in terms of the chances in which we had. Because, like I said twice already, we really should have put the ball in the back of the net at least once, of course. Because of course, the least amount of goals you can score in the game is, is um, have the least amount of goals you can score in the game while scoring is of course one. But yes, that that goes without saying. Let me let. <sighs> Guys, I'm tired. Forgive me, but yes, um, the goal itself. Oh my word! Another cross into the box. Another, another, another good shot in which we should not have allowed the striker to have has gone into the back of the net. You can argue that Kepa should have done a lot better, but I, I listen. I, I, I barely even saw it to be honest. I, it, it, I was so shocked by the fact that Newcastle United got the winner at such a late time that I barely even saw what happened. I think it was a header. I'm not entirely sure. I'm going to have to watch it back. But yes, um, a poor a poor defensive error from Chelsea um, for the goal. And you cannot say that Newcastle United didn't deserve it in the end because with the way they played and with the fact that they took the chance in which they had in the second half and took the chance that mattered, you cannot, you cannot criticise them, and that is exactly why I firmly believe that Chelsea fell vi victim to their criticisms. Let me start again. The fact that Newcastle United took their chance and we didn't take our chances just shows you that we've fallen, we've fallen victim to our past criticisms. And I'm not going to criticise Newcastle United for playing like, the, like that, because we've done so in the past, and everyone used to hate it, so who are we to criticise anyone else for doing so? But yes, overall... The funny thing is, is that I actually felt that we, were, we, we played alright, but the only thing that was missing is the fact that we just didn't put, the, the only thing that was missing was was the um, was the cutting edge in the final third, because everything else I felt was, was fine. Yes, we did, we, we did give the ball away a few times, yes, we, we did make a few mistakes at the back, and yes, um, we could have passed the ball a little bit quicker in midfield, but I felt as though we did we did enough to, to put the ball into the back of the net at least once and get a draw, or at least a draw, shall I say. But now for the positives and the negatives in which I took from yesterday's match. And as always, starting off with the positives. And by the way, 
if you if you lot are wondering what's going on in the background, um, I'm watching Liverpool versus Manchester United while my friend's family are. But yes, um, the first and only positive in which I took from the match yesterday is that I felt as though Engolo Kante and Rhys James were our standout players. Um, I don't think everyone else um, had a bad game or an incredibly bad game, but I don't think that they were as good as Angolo Kante and Rhys James were in yesterday's match against Newcastle United. And sadly, that is the only positive in which I took from yesterday's match. Um, moving on to the negatives then, there always has to be a negative, sadly. Or there always, there always has to be negatives, sadly. But yes, the first negative in which I took from yesterday's match against Newcastle United is that we were slow in the final third and allowed them to get back into their shape whenever we had a counter-attacking opportunity. Um, that needs to improve. That simply needs to improve. And at the end of my video yesterday, or the end of my reaction video, I did say that we need to work on our finishing and training because um, with, the, with the way we played in the final third yesterday, surely, surely we can do a lot better than that. But that is the first positive positive that is the first negative in which i took from yesterday's match guys i'm really tired but moving on to the second and final negative in which i took from yesterday's match this one is an obvious one the fact that we conceded from across that's another thing we need to improve on we need to our, our defending needs to be our defending needs to improve because we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go into a busy we're gonna go into a busy schedule as of now and if anything, we've we've just we've just started to embark on our busy schedule. We've got Arsenal next. We've got Hull in the FA Cup. We've then got Leicester. We've then got, we've then got the winter break, and then after the winter break, we've got Manchester United, and then after that, we've got Tottenham Hotspur and then Bayern Munich. I think that's how it goes, anyways. But yes, we we need to improve drastically because if we don't, then we could we could um, see a, we could see a meltdown happening at the club. Um, and we could see we could see some incredibly bad results coming our way, um, but yes, that is it for my thoughts on yesterday's match against Newcastle United. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below, and as always, I'll do my very best to respond. Now to conclude this review, I'm going to give you guys my thoughts on Chelsea's upcoming Premier League fixture, which will be taking place next Tuesday at Stamford Bridge against Arsenal, with kickoff at 8.15pm UK time. <sighs> we are certainly going to have to do a lot better in front of goal if we have to get anything against Arsenal at Stamford Bridge. Um, this will definitely be a tough game for Chelsea, but we should be seeing a reaction from the players following yesterday's defeat against Newcastle United. Yes, like I've just said, this will be a difficult game because Arsenal are a good side. They have some fantastic players in their team. When we played them last time at the Emirates, in the first half we were absolutely shocking for large parts of it, bar the last 10 minutes of course, where I felt as though we got back into the game and could have scored a, could have scored a goal ourselves. Um, we actually went into half time in that game with a one um, with, with a one nil deficit, and it so easily could have been more, if not should have been more. Um, Frank Lampard did make the tactical changes um, before half time and after half time, and they ended up working in our favour because, of course, we came out in the second half with a brilliant fight back. Some of the attacking play in that second half was fantastic, and in the end, I felt as though we definitely deserved to win. Um, we were brilliant in that second half. So hopefully we replicate our second half performance against Arsenal um, on the 29th of December last year um, in Tuesday's game throughout the course of the match because we need to do that because um, we're, I think I feel as though our aim is to catch Leicester because we're six points behind them and we do have to win our next two games because um, the second game in our next two games is actually against Leicester and that's in the Premier League. I'm talking about our next two Premier League games because of course if I was talking about our next two games in all competitions that would include the FA Cup game against Hull at um, the KCOM Stadium or whatever it's called. But anyways, we need to replicate that second half performance against Arsenal at the Emirates um, last, last month because um, it's... We're, we're, we have nothing to lose at the moment. We we really need to go out and, and try and get the win, um, pretty much like we did for large part, large parts of the game yesterday evening against Newcastle United. But guys, I'm not confident. I'm never confident. I'm, that's just how I am. But hopefully we get the job done. Yes, we're going to have to come up against teams like Newcastle United, who are just going to try and sit back and build the Berlin Wall. And like I said, that is not a criticism. Credit to them, they did deserve the win in the end because they took the chance in which they got in the second half and we did not. So, um, to any Newcastle fan out there who'd, who'd, um, who'd find this video, credit to you lot. Hopefully you don't get relegated because I actually like you lot. 
But yes, um, that is it for my thoughts on Chelsea's upcoming Premier League fixture against Arsenal. And that is it for this review. And by the way, I do, I do apologise if this video comes out um, too dark. This is the only time I was able to do this review. But yes, um, thank you all for watching. Like, comment and subscribe to my channel if you're new. And I'll see you all very soon for some more videos. Come on you blues. Come on Frank Lampard. And peace.